So it's been a minute, but we are back with career mode on F124 and we arrive at Baku. Round number 14 of the 16 round season, which means three rounds remain. If you want to watch the previous episode, guys, then go watch it now. Spoiler warning ahead, and I don't want to talk about it too much as the championship is at stake. So yeah, go watch it. Link in the top right, and I hope you guys enjoy that one. But for this one, we're here at Baku looking to try and hopefully have another strong weekend. Monza, last episode, went okay reasonably well and you know we made some inroads in the championship but the gap is still there um you can also notice here we're very close to actually completely maxing out hamilton as a driver in this game it may even happen at the end of this episode which would mean 99 on every single driver stat which is absolutely bonkers anyway we jump into the weekend's updates and we begin with aerodynamic upgrades now we're going to focus on the rear downfalls for the rear diffuser it's a major and that will arrive before brazil so hopefully we can improve the car even more it's a pretty big update which will give us a lot of improvement now we do have more upgrades on the way one for the chassis one for the aero and then one more for the chassis on the hydraulics now we unfortunately are going to have to lose the rear floor under tray in brackets distribution so there's a rear floor under tray upgrade here for for um weight redistribution but you can see here actually there's another one further down so uh yeah i thought it was actually on the weight reduction but it's on the weight redistribution which we've lost so that has hurt us a little bit but because we had three more upgrades coming onto the car this weekend we've actually maintained our lead and uh, yeah definitely still going to be the strongest force this weekend heading into Baku. You can see Aston Martin, Mercedes, Red Bull, all really close. Ferrari also in the mix. So definitely it's going to be interesting to see how things pan out in Brazil and Vegas. In the meantime, forecast around Baku is dry, no rain expected. In the championship, the gap is 20 points between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton. In the constructors, we have a 15 point lead over Red Bull, so things are looking reasonably healthy. But the main focus here is the Drivers' Championship, and we've got to try and claw that gap back a little bit as we only have two more rounds to go after this. So we get the weekend's action underway and we begin with practice. Now you can see tire wear looking pretty decent after our race runs. Uh, the front right, we hit a wall, so we've got a bit of extra damage. So generally tire wear was quite low. You can see on the tire wear factor, 0.74%. Pretty insane. Uh, race fuel also looking pretty healthy. Our lap times were also really strong. You can see there on the graph, you know, almost two seconds quicker at some points, you know, really good pace. Anyway, we finished practice in 14th place on the mediums, just behind Albon in 13th. So looking pretty quick in the Williams. Uh, Lando only 18th and Verstappen up the sharp end as we score maximum R&D points in that session. Anyway, practice done. Let's get into qualifying here. It is a truly unique layout. Welcome to Baku and welcome to qualifying. Okay, here's an update. We've got a leak in the hydraulic system, so it's going to be a few minutes before we can get you back out on track, I'm afraid. Now, we had a fault with the braking system, which delayed our appearance on track. So we are a little bit out of sync, and we're going a bit later than the rest of the AI. Now, on this first attempt, I didn't use overtake. I wanted to get a baseline of where the car was on softs with hot lap mode. We've got fuel for another lap, so we're going to go again after this. I just want to see... Uh, where we are pace wise making our way up to the line and we do a 136.7 um, a good six tenths off Lando in second place P4 at the time eventually dropping to seventh so we're now going to go for our second and this time first proper run using overtake a little bit deep in turn one we just hit the wall okay be careful with the front wing you've taken some minor damage 
got damage, went for repairs, and again, we lost some time. So I couldn't quite go for two runs. So all we can do now is go for our final attempt. And we kind of have to go for it here because there's no more time. It has to be now. So we're going to burn overtake out of one, out of three, and try to really commit here and set a decent lap. Now we've run a bit deep through turn one, just like on the second attempt, but we do pull it back on the exit, turn two, clipping the curb there. And that's just 30 seconds left in the session. Recovering lost time using overtake, and we're gonna be a 10th up heading into turn three as the snap and goes quickest, but we miss our breaking point. And again, get damaged, but this time, it's game over. Mind that front wing is going to need replacing if it takes too much damage. And just a very scruffy session. Um, you know, repair time cost us running. So we didn't really get three runs. And I didn't get it right. I don't know why I managed that so terribly. Um, I was running 56 bars in practice and it felt brilliant. But in qualifying, I just couldn't stop locking up. Um, but when I ran 55, I was locking the rear, so I just couldn't get the balance right. Anyway, Verstappen's on pole, and we're only 12, so this is the worst case scenario. A warm welcome to you from Azadlik Square, heart of Baku, and home, of course, of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. With high speeds, tight corners, and few runoff zones, many are expecting a safety car here today. So our drivers will have to stay very much on their toes, and hopefully, out of the barriers. Baku City Circuit then, it's an unpredictable 3.7 mile track around the streets of the Azerbaijan capital. 20 turns for our drivers to navigate today, including the infamous Turn 8, one of the tightest and most challenging corners of the season. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. An immense lap from Carlos Sainz yesterday puts him in pole position, with Charles Leclerc alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Russell, Norris, Fernando Alonso, Perez, Stroll, Bottas, Gasly, Hülkenberg, Verstappen, Hamilton, Sonoda, Ricardo, Joe, Ocon, Behrman, Albon, Theo Porcher, and Oscar Piastri. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. Welcome to the commentary box. I'm Alex Jakes. Delighted to say that we're joined today by Anthony Davidson. Well, they're having a better time than their teammates so far this year. How do you keep that momentum going? Well, this is the most advanced sport anywhere on the planet. How has it changed since you were last racing? The cars have got bigger, they're heavier, but critically, there's more downforce to play with as well now. There was about four tonnes of downforce on the car at 300 kilometres an hour when I drove. You're now looking more towards five tonnes of downforce. So there, you know, there's a, a big difference in performance. Uh, but you've, because of that, being the car being heavier and bigger, you've got to drive in a smoother way. You've got to look after it a bit more. You've got to nurse it through the slow speed corners more. They were much more nimble, agile machines when I drove in Formula 1 compared to now. Now this race just got a hell of a lot more interesting because you may have seen on the grid rundown, Max Verstappen has a grid penalty and he's right there alongside. So we begin this race P11 and P12. So this should be spicy. It's basically given us the chance to outscore Max and that is huge in the championship. The gap is 20 points and we have to get some points back on him immediately. So we're gonna jump into it. Now the strategy is going to be a medium to soft tire strap. A simple one, reverse one stop, alternate one stop, whatever you wanna call it. Fuel, I'm going for three and a half laps of fuel extra, which should hopefully get the job done. So I'm feeling really confident. I'm not gonna ramble too much in the intro. Let's get stuck in. We've got a race to fight back from and to try and get back into the podium places. But the key thing here, we must beat Verstappen. The good thing about this track is that this pit straight gives us a great opportunity to build up some tire temperature, unlike other circuits. So, ready to go. Tires, decent temperature. Engine, decent temperature. Let's get stuck in. Let's get into it. This is gonna be a huge race in the championship here at Baku. Mediums all round for this one as we get stuck in. I'm 
not a bad start. One of my better ones as we head down towards turn one. Getting pinched down to the inside curb though, which isn't going to help us. I'm going to try and set up a bit of an exit through turn two. Doesn't quite work out. Verstappen getting past Hulkenberg at the start, although they're fighting away side by side right now. Just going to wait here. I'm going to try and see if I can set up, maybe move into turn four on Sonoda. Side by side. The Haas cars getting involved. We're going to go late on the brakes, ran the outside at the chicane. Well, we're just boxed in here. Verstappen and Hulkenberg causing a bit of a roadblock. Sonoda goes or tries to go through. We're going to take a shortcut here over the curb and it works out. The car doesn't bottom out. So we stay in front of Yuki, crucially, and Verstappen ahead. So no change of position on lap one, which is huge. So we're going to see what sort of progress Max does around it. Got a decent bit of charge as well, so we can deploy as much as needed to try and... Okay, we're monitoring somewhere on the internal combustion engine. Be aware that we're going to start to see a loss of power. Try and make some moves. We do have some engine wear to deal with mainly on the ICE, that's going to be the, the concern. The rest of the engine is okay. On to the pit straight then. We're going to get the battery on. Verstappen's flashing, so he's possibly out of deployment. So we're going to get stuck in, but we're using everything here. Now we're out of juice. DRS is being enabled this lap. We can use DRS when you're within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. Side by side with Verstappen. I've used all my battery on the pit straight. Not able to get through. We'll try again. Although Max does have DRS himself. Just completely out of deployment here. So no barrier to fight. I think we're a little bit slow on the straight. Because Verstappen was flashing all the way down that main straight. And we barely gained on him. So I think we might have more wing than some of these guys. So we'll have to bear that in mind. Verstappen's flashing again. D-rating. I'm using hot lap this time. Seems to be working well. Russell. Tire condition still looking good. So big send into one and we get it. This time we managed to get him on the inside. He doesn't defend it. So that leaves the gap. And we take it and we pass Verstappen. Russell up front going purple and pulling away. That was a great move. That was a Piastri Leclerc-esque from real life. Verstappen thought I was too far back, did not move across the cover of the inside, and we just launched it from way back and got the move done under braking, which is good. 57 bias working well for us in the race, even though we was locking up a 56 in qualifying, but obviously that was you know pushing as hard as possible. Might have had a chance there to get Hulkenberg. That's a possible overtaking opportunity, I think. That's a spot we can pass. The pace is slowing here, so I think someone's running a bit slow out front or someone might have damage either way those positions up for grabs we've got so much more wings so we're just way more capable in the middle sector in the corners to just get the hammer down and get stuck in trying to pressure Hulkenberg here he goes slightly defensive there which puts him offline a chance for us to create some separation with Verstappen would be ideal Right, let's see. Let's see if the hot lap mode works again. What's happened? Only three tenths behind as well. But the AI seemed to top out on battery. So it leaves them exposed. Here we go. We've got a bit of momentum this time. The energy stores depleting, reducing our overall capacity. The more charge you hold, the faster that capacity will drop. Another great move. We got pretty close, but we did the faint. And at the last second, got the move down the inside. Just got to be wary of Hulkenberg fighting back here, but we've got that one done. So the AI just leave themselves completely vulnerable on the pitch straight without battery. Yellow flag. Yellow. Who is it? Is it in front? Is it behind? I think it's behind. Verstappen still seems to be running, so it's not him. Here's some information on 
Juan Sinoda for you. They're retiring from the race. So Yuki out in the house. A uh, safety car though, so we continue as before. <laughs> We're all over the back of Pierre now. We're quick. We're showing some real pace here. We're not quite going to drop Hulkenberg out of DRS, but we're going to get Pierre quite easily hit. He's flashing. We'll just get to the inside. There we go. And we'll go through. Right then, Bottas in the Audi. Next up, one by one, the dominoes will fall and we'll make our way back up there. We've been quick all weekend. This qualifying was an absolute disaster. So we've got to try and put that right. Pierre out of DRS range. We also have an objective to get to fifth place, which should be doable. At the current progress we're making, we're going to use battery here to make sure Pierre does not get within a second. So that will break the train, which is good for us. Though it might help Verstappen in directly, depending on how he gets on. But we've now got a chance here to get Bottas. Again, we'll get that inside line. We're going quicker and quicker each lap into the 139s. And that's P8. Up next, Checo Perez. Will Red Bull deploy the Ministry of Defense? We're going to find out. Now we're close. We can definitely have a look at Checo. He's going to have DRS on stroll, but as long as we're right there, we should be able to make the difference with having battery on our side. Checo using quite a bit, trying to make an early run for it. There we go. The flashing begins. So the AI just seems to be flawed in terms of where they use their battery. But that gives us an opportunity. You can see the Red Bull's definitely pretty speedy on the straight. Oh, late move from Perez there in the braking zone. Whew. Slight contact on the way through. Yellow flag further back. Crucial move there, passing just before the yellows came out. That's a blue dot. Could that be Verstappen or is that somebody else? Is it even a DNF or is it a puncture? That could be a Williams, a V-carb. Who is it? It's Porsche and the V-carb. Okay, so poor Marvin Max, but never mind. Now, interestingly, Norris has actually started to get away. He started on Haas, which I didn't realize, and now it seems like those tyres are starting to make a difference. So we'll keep an eye on things and see how Norris gets on. We're going to fail the objective because he's my target and he started getting away. We're now going to pass Stroll here with the RS assistance. So we'll move to the top six. Stroll defends early and hard. So we go to the outside and get the move done. But let's see, our front tyres are, are pristine. Very good tire wear. It's just okay, some information on Norris. They've got some kind of mechanical problem. Well, 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 well. I was gonna say something, but never mind. Um, the rear tires uh what get hurt around here and the hards might be now obviously quite a bit better. There'll be zero tire wear, but Norris now in trouble, so he's gonna be vulnerable. So we're gonna get a chance here to get another position and move into the top five. Just before the pit window, we can win this race. Absolutely. Starting to really struggle now on my rear tyres. We've managed to just keep Stroll out of DRS. And we've got within Lando's, of course, him slowing down. Naturally, we might have a chance to get him into turn three here. Let's just make sure we keep it tidy through the first two corners because I, I'm struggling to get the traction down now, which made me really strong because of the tyre wet. Really locking on 57 bias is a bit of a red flag. And again, my exit has just hurt me there. We're not close enough. Norris is burning battery. The AI have battery available here. It's just on the pitch street. They don't seem to burn. We're going to have to put a lunge on here. And it's going to have to be, I think, into the hairpin. Let's try and get close through the chicane. Okay, Lewis. Lando's ahead of you now. Come on, mate. This is it. Let's try and get past them quickly. There we go. 
be able to hard break him. Oh, mate, you made that look easy. Nice work. That's why I love working with you. Smashed it. Not ideal as a team, but it is what it is. We can't out traction, so we have to out break. We'll make sure to break the RS here as well. Cars into the pit lane. Alonso Leclerc. Russell as well. Also in there. We're going a bit longer. We're going to go to lap 14. So we're going to drag this out. Just a little bit more. We might even go to lap 15. Because the AI are going for hards. We're going to go for softs. The hards have nowhere. So um, we're a very hard compound. I think this is the better strategy. So we'll take the lead. And Norris in second. We're snapping 39-4. Getting the hammer down. We'll see where he is at the end of all of this. Norris and I are running identical pace at the moment. Okay, we want you to pit this lap, so push now, push. Norris actually a little bit quicker than me on that last lap. I'm going to go even longer because those hards are going to barely have any wear on them. We're not going to have an offset, so... The pace is good right now. We're not really losing much time because, again, the tire wear is so low. We're holding our pace on these mediums quite nicely. You can see we're going to go longer. Pace is okay. We're keeping a decent rhythm to those on the hard. Norris now quicker than us, but he should be in soon. It won't be this lap because this was meant to be for me, but I want him to box first. I want to go longer because... There's going to be barely any wear on those hard tyres at this stage. So we'll quickly burn our softs out and we won't have much of an advantage. I want to only really go on them for a, like a late sprint. So I'm thinking more like lap 20. So uh, we'll see what we can do. Tires fall fine on the front. It's just the rears. We have to just manage, you know, traction zones a little bit. But the front end is working well. So we can keep turning and braking late. Right then, Russell is right behind Norris. I think Norris will pit this lap. I think finally he will come in. So that will leave us out alone. I'm gonna hit this objective real quick. Great stuff. It looked like you made easy work of that target. Let's try and keep that going right through to the end of the race. Russell purple. Norris does actually stay out, so we're both going long here, possibly looking at some soft tires. I just hope we don't stack. We need Lando to pit this lap. I can go to 21, but we need him to pit this lap. Right then, Russell within a second. I don't plan on fighting him. I'm just going to keep doing my usual battery deployment strategy, which has been working well. If my logic serves me right, Russell might struggle because of the issue with the battery for them. So we might be able to hold our own to turn one. He's closing. He has a look. Lando's still staying out. Russell goes through. Okay, be aware. The grip levels are going to start falling away soon. And we get DRS. That wasn't too bad. But I really wanted Norris to pit. I bet if I pit this lap, he's going to stack behind me. I'm going to stick to my guns here. Norris will pit this lap. I'm convinced he will. If he doesn't, then I've got it wrong. But I know he will. We've stuck with Russell here, so we're running at lead pace. Best we can hope for today is P6 anyway, so... Maybe P5, actually. We won't pass George. Lando will pit this lap. Come on. I'm sure of it. He stays out. Right, well, that's that then. He's going to have to stack. I wish there was just an option where you can just radio your team and make your teammate pit or let him pit, because the reason he's not boxing is because I haven't boxed yet. Right then, here we go on this one. To be fair, thanks to Russ, we've actually got a nice gap over Norris to the point where the stack might be minimal if he does come in. So, let's get to it. Confirmed, we'll receive you at the end of this lap. Here we go. Sending it into the pit lane. Decent commitment on speed. Get it all slowed. Lovely. Right. Here we go then, and there it is. Like clockwork. Hopefully it's not a big hold for him. He's in there getting serviced already, so it should be too bad. We'll go soft slanders, go mediums. Okay. 
And look at this, we're out just ahead of Verstappen. Just ahead. Bit of contact on the back end. We'll use the battery because Verstappen's going to have DRS it. He's got wing damage as well. Might have got that on the back of us just now. There was some contact at pit exit. I was moving across slowly. I mean, there wasn't no red arrows. We hold on though, P5. Let's try and get Alonso and the fastest lap. It is possible, it is doable. We're gonna have really good tires. We're gonna move the brake bias rearward. I've gone down on front wing so we can go full send here for the last three laps. Three qualifying laps coming up. We'll do whatever we can to try and catch. First warning for track limits, no big deal. Gap is really coming down here. We've got a shot of a podium. Verstappen's in big trouble with that wing damage. He might finish only P10. So we've got a chance to outscore him. We're gonna crush the fastest lap. It's game on here. It really is game on. Well, going on to the last lap. It's gonna be three and a half. We're gaining at around three and a half per lap. We're gonna go purple again. This is going to be one intense final lap here. Here we go. This is critical. No mistakes allowed. We might have a chance to run onto them onto the pit straight. If we're lucky, this is going to be close. We should be able to get DRS. The question is, will we have any battery left? Try not to use everything I've got in this pursuit. Okay, we're there. I think we're just going to fall short. Not quite enough charge on the battery. And the AI always hangs something back for the last lap. Russell wins. We fall short in the chase. We'll get the fastest lap of the race. But that's as far as it's going to go. But we outscore Max. That one, guys. But uh, still got some points. Thank you for the continued efforts. The British driver will look up and see the checkered flag first. George Russell takes the checkered flag. Well, they showed true grit out there today, not to be outdone by the rough circumstances, many points that came their way today. A job well done, not the easiest of days, but they walk away with a race victory. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team, and they certainly deserve it. Now, I know everyone's going to be scratching their heads. Why didn't I pit earlier? I think I would have pit around lap 20. That would have been the perfect lap, and that would have given us at least P3. The issue is, I've never seen the AI, my teammate AI, go that long before. When you basically disobey your strategy and you go long, the most that other AI teammate will stay out is one lap. But Lando went to lap 22, which is baffling and then he went for mediums so i've never seen that before and that was not what i expected i really thought it'd be one plus one lap whatever lando had scheduled that he'd box now logic would dictate if the ai who started a mediums box around lap 12 for hard that means their hard task is around 14 laps long so i thought lando would go 15 16 at the absolute most but ended up going another six laps so it really did backfire and, you know, it was like lap after lap. If I pit, he's going to stack. The gap was two seconds, three seconds. Eventually, because of Russell, we opened the gap around five and he didn't actually lose much time stacking. But, yeah, it just didn't work out. So really um, inefficient. And, again, I just wish, I've been asking it for years, just put a feature in the game where you can ask on the radio to let the teammate pit. Essentially, override the pit stop window and let it be open for someone else. Anyway, ramble aside, P5, Verstappen, does not finish in the point. That wing damage hitting the back of us on pit exit 
cost him the race. We also get the fastest lap. So if we scroll down, we'll try and look for Max. He finished in 16th place and actually I think stopped again to get a wing change. So that's huge because in the championship, the gap now is nine points. Huge, absolutely massive. I believe there's two rounds to go. So this could go to the wire. Constructors, we've got a 24 point gap over Red Bull. So we're looking good for both championships as things stand. That's the key word, as things stand. Anyway, guys, that's gonna be it for today's episode. Like, subscribe. Let's try and smash over a thousand likes on this one. If you enjoyed it, comment down below your thoughts on the incident with Verstappen. As always, a big shout out to the members for supporting the channel. Also check out the videos on screen if you haven't seen them, along with the links down below to channel partners, sponsors, and affiliates. And there you guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao.